Thank you, everyone. Be seated. All right, we are back on the record in State versus Brooks. Appearances are as they were before. The state should be prepared to call the next witness. Okay, very good. Then bring the jury out, please. You didn't call it that name that you started with. I don't know if the audio is on. Audio is on, and I called the case. I actually didn't specifically refer to you, but I did say State versus Brooks. But in any event, your objection is noted for the record, and we'll continue with testimony. Will you be addressing subject matter jurisdiction? Is that a judicial determination not to answer, Your Honor? So is that a type of agreement? All right. Yeah. Subject matter jurisdiction has yet to be proven for the record. Were you working uh, on duty as a law enforcement officer on November 21st of 2021? Objection. Yes, sir, I was. Um, overruled. Did you at some point become aware that there was a parade in downtown Waukesha? Objection, Lee. Overruled. Please yes. answer. I went to the parade route <laughs> and uh, I talked to a few people around injured people and determined that I wasn't really able to be of help there because they were all back injuries and I can't, in a squad, I can't help with that. So what did you do next? I answered a call on the radio that said there was a man going door to door on Elizabeth Street asking to use people's phones to call an Uber. Where did you go from there? Uh, I got out and partnered up with two other officers and we decided that we would walk the street and look for this person. Were you wearing a body-worn camera at the time? Yes, sir, I was. Was that device also equipped with a microphone? Objection yes. leading. Overruled. Yes, sir. Do you know whether your device was activated as you were walking down Elizabeth Street that, that afternoon? Objection. It was. Overruled. All right, we played six seconds. Do you recognize that video? I do. What is it? It is my body camera video of walking down Elizabeth Street. From November 21st? Objection yes, sir. leading. I will um, overrule it um, and the answer may stand. Does this video and the associated audio accurately reflect what happened that night as you saw it? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, sir. I move exhibit 80 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Let me see. <laughs> Describe where in the video you first saw that person. Objection leading. Overruled. I first saw him uh, standing on the porch. And what, if anything, did you see that person doing when you first saw him? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. He appeared to be rather agitated. Why do you say that? Objection leading. Overruled. It's not leading. You may answer. He was moving back and forth on the porch and gesturing. Do you recall what you were wearing that evening? 
I do. What? The exact same set of clothing that I'm wearing today. Including long sleeves? Yes. Objection leading. Overruled. <coughs> Did this person, depicted at 53 seconds, um, draw your attention in any way based on what he was wearing? Yes. Uh, it was chilly out, um, lower 40s, upper 30s, and he was in a t-shirt, jogging pants, and no shoes. Thank you. Right. You guys don't want your name on it, man? No. Okay, last. Okay. Okay. Um, what did we see in that portion of the video? That was a sandwich. Where did that sandwich come from? His, his right pants pocket. The subject on the ground is? Yes, sir. Did you at some point ask the subject depicted in the video at 114 to identify himself by name? Go ahead. I did. What was that person's response? He identified himself as Daryl Brooks. Do you see Mr. Brooks in the courtroom today? I do. Can you point him out for us by telling us where he's sitting and what he's wearing? He is seated at the defense table wearing a dark colored suit and striped tie and a mask over his face. Just to be thorough, Your Honor, could we please have Mr. Brooks remove his mask momentarily? Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Go ahead. Now that Mr. Brooks has removed his mask, does that change anything about your testimony today? Objection. I don't consent to being called DNA. Um, you leading. You may go ahead and answer. That's Daryl Brooks. There's multiple units. David 216 has his What is your name? Brooks. We are one male. We are one male. We are one male. We are one male. We Sitting on the witness stand today, do you acknowledge that Mr. Brooks has a short haircut? Objection. I don't consent to be called that name. He's leading. Um, sustain us to the form of the question, please. How would you describe Mr. Brooks's haircut today? Objection. I don't consent to be called that name. Oh. Sir, I understand your objection. Please do not interrupt with that. Further, so that the questioning of the witnesses may continue, you may answer. If you say that name, I'm objecting. And the jury will disregard the objection if it's solely for the name purposes. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Brooks has his hair cut close today. What about when he took his face mask down? Did you notice his facial hair? Objection leading. Overruled. He does have facial hair. Did you notice anything different about his facial hair <coughs> today versus in the video? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. And that is also trimmed closer. Does the hairstyle and the facial hair hairstyle here in court today uh, give you any pause or concern <laughs> over whether or not it's Mr. Brooks in the video? Objection. Go ahead and answer, please. No, not at all. Let's resume playing at 123. <laughs> Objection noted for the record. <laughs> I just used the microphone to call for a minute, that's all. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what. If everything turns out to be on the up and up, life will be good and you'll be on your way, all right? Suspect, I presume? Unknown. Ask him. Ask him if he knows. He was on the porch here. Yeah, I was using his phone. Bell, what's your location? I was using his phone. You're holding the WMH drone, loading her down. I called my friend. Any squads available for a transport? I'm on the other. I'm the 500. So give me a lift. That's all. I was just using his phone. Hey, I'm Mr. Schwartz. I'm leaving WSC. Where do you need me? What do you... Can I just sit up? I was... Everybody, please go on the phone. Can I please just sit up? <laughs> Do you have any weapons on no, you? Sir. What's your name, guy? 9209. I just told her my name. What is your name, Brooks? Yes, sir. What's your first name? Jarrell Brooks? Yes, sir. Additional victims. Can we start on the next block? 
Well, this matches the description of the guy that got called on who was going door to door over here. Yeah, I was trying to. Where are your shoes, man? I was trying to use somebody's phone. Where are your shoes? My flip flops is in his house. Uh, did you hear the last thing said by the suspect on the ground at this point? Objection yes. leading. Overruled. What did he say? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. He said, my flip, my flip flops is in his house. Do you know if any flip flops or any other shoes of any kind were ever retrieved from the residence that this was taking place in front of? Objection speculative. Overruled. You may answer. I did go in the house and speak to the resident there and asked if he had left shoes or, or outer garments or, or anything like that, and he said that he had not. He was saying he, he just gave me now a jacket. He's identifying soft flat, lighter skin, black male, dreadlock, red shirt, blue jeans, no shoes. Yeah, I did, I did go to the house. I went to that house right there, right down the street, right here. Where are you coming from, man? I was coming from that uh, parade down here. Okay. I know a friend down here. In my so I think that's a fabulous Stand idea. Up for me, bro. Uh, I can't, Mr. Brooks. Okay, I'll tell you what. No, roll over on your butt. Okay, not you. Yeah. Roll over on your butt. Ah. Roll up on your knees. <laughs> roll over on your Roll up on your knees. Okay, okay. 500 block of Elizabeth. Stand up. Right now. 553, 553 five, Elizabeth. Ah, uh, my. What are you doing? Freaking uh, sweet. Oh. Back to here. Did I do something? That is yet to be determined. Of, sir. Of my squad, man. Okay. Is there anything I need to stick me poke me hurt? No, no, back. no, not at all, sir. Okay. Not at all. I don't have any weapons. Glad to hear it. Nothing like that. How did you get up over here, man? I was coming to see a friend. Yeah? yeah. Where where's your friend? I don't know now. Woo. Spin your hand spin your back, back your hand ah. for me. Ah. I had, yeah, you injured, I went, you injured at all, dude? Yeah. What hurts? When when they slammed me, my knee, I'm out, I already have an injury. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes, yes, yes. That's my ID. It certainly is. Yes. <laughs> I'm so cold. I bet you are. The officer whose squad he was going to be placed in uh, went through his pockets to make sure he did not have anything that would be dangerous. Okay. And do you know if anything was retrieved from his pockets? Yes. Objection. Overruled. Her answer may stand. There were no weapons, were there? Objection. No weapons. Overruled. Her answer may stand. What, if anything, do you recall being recovered from his pocket? Um, ID. Uh, some cards, uh, I believe there was a credit card in there, and a car key. Those are my hands, and in my hands are the property that was taken from Mr. Brooks. You can see the officer's back at the open door of the squad and uh, Mr. Brooks' leg in the light there where he's sitting in the squad. Your Honor, I would move Exhibit 176 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection, relevancy. Do you know what happened to the objects that are in your hands in that exhibit? Yes, I, I gave them to the officer uh, whose car <coughs> he, uh, Mr. Brooks was sitting in. At one point, you stated uh, the suspect was wearing jogging pants. That be fair to say? Yes, sir. Were the jogging pants or blue jeans? They were soft pants. Can we show uh, Exhibit 80 again? Yes, we can. Well, yes, we can. Go ahead. Thank you. Can you pause? Can you zoom in a little bit? And 
play a few more seconds. Pause. You would describe those pants as jogging pants or soft pants, as you say? Yes. And you made reference to finding a uh, sandwich, credit cards, and things of that nature in, in the, uh, the pants, correct? I found the sandwich while you were laying on the ground. And you also stated that you found a credit card and things of that nature. In fact, would it be fair to say that that's what was in your hand on Exhibit 176? There were what appeared to be credit cards and ID and a car key. And they were in your hand, correct? They were. So would, it, so would it be fair to say you also found those and not just a sandwich? I did not pull that stuff out of your pocket, sir. That was a different officer. I did hold it while he finished searching you, sir. Did you find anything else? On your person? I was not the person searching you. Aside from uh, the sandwich while you were on the ground. So as far as your search, you, you just found a sandwich? Correct. And at the time, do you recall why the suspect was being detained? Yes. And what, what was the reason? Because you matched a description that was broadcast over the police radio of a suspect involved in the parade incident. Do you recall writing that the suspect was being detained for investigative purposes? Yes. Any reason why you wouldn't state what those purposes were in the report? Because at the time we had contact with you, I was not fully aware of the circumstances. Well, would it be fair to, would it be fair to say that you just stated why the suspect was being detained? I, did I just stated why this, I'm sorry, what was the question exactly, sir? You just, would it be fair to say that you just stated when, when asked why was the suspect being de detained at that moment? You at answered, that moment. Yeah, yes. at, at that moment that you, you detained the suspect. You stated because they matched the description of someone involved in the parade. Yes, sir. That's correct. But then you stated that at the you just stated that at the time you didn't you weren't fully aware. I knew that people had been hurt. I knew that shots had been fired. I did not know how many people were hurt. I did not know by what mechanism people would be hurt. I did not know the magnitude of the injuries. I just knew that something violent had happened. So it'd be fair to say you you weren't in the known of a lot of information at that point. That's true. Grounds. Um, overruled. Her answer may stand. Would it be fair to say that you were being heard in Exhibit 80 stating that if everything was on the up and up, you would be on your way? Yes, sir, that's correct. That was me. So would it be fair to say that was an inaccurate statement if the suspect fit the description of something that happened in the parade? Not at all. And what do you mean by not at all? 
I mean, sometimes people look like someone who did some, something and turn out not to be that person. But that was not the case here. So as far as you knew at the time, it could have been mistaken identity. It could have been, but it was not. Well, at the time, it would be fair to say at the time you didn't know. At the time, I did not know. Did you give the suspect any information on why they were being detained? While you were being put in the car, you were informed you were being detained for investigative purposes, which is a stand, uh, an answer that's appropriate for the circumstances. So it would be fair to say that that's not really all that informative? I did not have a lot of information to give you, sir. Keep saying you. Who are you referring to? You, Mr. Brooks. Daryl Brooks, seated at the defense table. Any reason why you wouldn't tell a suspect why they're being detained? Essentially being that if you take someone into custody, they should know why they're being taken into custody. Why would a suspect be detained without any information, to your knowledge? Objection. Grounds and answered. Um, also calls for speculation, vague. So would it be fair to say that you can detain a suspect without them knowing why they're being detained? Objection. This Grounds. calls for a legal analysis, not factually relevant. No. Sustained us to the form of the question. Do you recall when you got the report of shots fired? I believe that was one of the first things I heard over the radio before I was even there. Do you recall ever um, finding out where the shots fired came from? Eventually I did. Do you recall in your reading report writing that when you had uh, uh, arrived at Elizabeth and West and parked your squad and began to walk down the street that you had your firearm in your hand? Yes. And was that because of the call of shots fired or did you feel unsafe at the time? That's because there were shots fired and I did not know by whom. Do you recall um, the area of, of where the shots fired? Was that the, the, the general area? The general area? Somewhere in the vicinity of the parade. Is Elizabeth and West in the general area? It's a few blocks away. Do you have any reason to believe that the shots came from the suspect? I did not know who had done shooting. I had heard a report of shots fired. I did not know by whom, as I've said, sir. Any reason to believe that the shots came from the suspect is, is what I'm asking. I did not know. And you also stated that in your written report that it was in the upper 30s that evening with the brisk wind. Would that be fair to say? It was Pretty upper cold. 30s, lower 40s, somewhere right in there. It was cold. I was cold. Do you think that maybe, maybe the gesturing was because the suspect was cold? Objection. Grounds. Calls for speculation. Um, overruled. She may answer if she's able. I didn't know. 
And do you recall checking the pockets of the coat worn by the suspect? Yes. Do you recall how the suspect obtained the coat? I recall what I was told. So it would be fair to say you weren't sure if you were only told this information. Would that be fair to say? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You, you made reference to saying you, you only know what you were told. So it would be fair to say at that time you didn't know unless you were told. Didn't know what? How the suspect obtained the coat. I asked the resident of the house you were at. Actually, I believe he volunteered to me that he had given you a coat to wear. And you checked the pockets of the coat? Yes. And did you find anything? I did not find anything. At what point did you learn that uh, the suspect who was being detained would be arrested? At some point later. Did you write your report that, that evening? I believe I wrote it the next morning. So it would be fair to say after you had learned a little bit more information, then you wrote the report? That would be true, yes. And do you recall initially responding to uh, Clinton Street and Broadway first? Yes, sir. And do you recall why you responded to that location first? To see if I could help anyone. About how long did you stay there before responding to Elizabeth? <clears throat> Just a few minutes. No further questions. All right, thank you. Any redirect? Uh, referring specifically the, to the time that you placed the handcuffs on Mr. Brooks, remember that time frame? Yes, sir. Um, overruled, you may answer. Thank you. Yes, I do. Do you recall how Mr. Brooks ended up on the ground as that was happening? I do. Could you tell us about that? Objection. Saw, saw in the video. Overruled, the witness may answer. We instructed him to put his hands up and then to get down on the ground. Did he comply with those instructions? He did. Did you or any other officer have to put hands on Mr. Brooks to get him on the ground? Objection. Speculative. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. <coughs> no, sir, we did not. After he was on the ground, that's when the handcuffs went on? Just correct. Leading. Overruled. She may answer. Your answer again was? That's correct. At any point after the handcuffs went on, did you or any other officer throw Mr. Brooks to the ground? Objection leading. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. We did not. How did you treat Mr. Brooks as you moved him from his prone position on the ground to the squad car? Objection. Overruled. As the video shows, um, he was instructed, let's call it the path of least resistance, to get up off of a prone position eventually to his feet with a minimum of discomfort. Sir, I want to direct your attention to the date of November 21 of 2021. And uh, you are aware of the Waukesha Christmas Parade taking place that afternoon. Is that correct, sir? Objection. We correct. I was working on um, well, Hold on. Um, understand it's leading. There is some leeway when it's just laying foundation. So it's overruled, and the witness may answer. And the answer he provided may stand. Go ahead. Correct. I was assigned to work the Christmas Parade. All right. At some point in time, were you aware of uh, injuries to those involved in the parade, sir? Objection, Lee. Yes. Overruled. Later that evening, were you aware of a suspect being in, taken into custody in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? Objection, Lee. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. 
I heard a specialist climb come over the air indicating that there was a subject going door to door in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street. And as I traveled back eastbound on Elizabeth Street in the 500 block, I observed the three officers from those aforementioned police departments uh, detaining one subject at gunpoint in the front lawn of 553 Elizabeth Street. Do you know about what time of day this was? Uh, not off the top of my head. It was, it was dark out, though. Okay. As in relation to when the incident at the parade occurred to when you're arriving on Elizabeth Street, can you give us a rough time frame? Um, meeting. Overruled. You uh, 45 minutes an hour okay. at the max. Okay. So when you roll up on 553 Elizabeth Street, tell me what you saw. I could see the lights from the other officers illuminating a subject on the ground. Uh, I immediately pulled up, parked my squad, got out and began running uh, to where the officers were. And as I uh, came up to where they were in the front lawn area between the residence and the sidewalk, they were in the midst of handcuffing and detaining a subject on the ground. The subject that was being handcuffed and detained on the ground, do you see that person in the courtroom here today? I do, yes. Are you able to identify him? Yes. Would you like him to remove his mask in order to do so, sir? Please. Okay. Mr. Brooks, if you please. Thank you. So the subject I saw was Daryl Brooks seated at the defendant's table wearing a dark colored suit with a gray shirt. Now you said he was already on the ground in the process of being handcuffed. Is that correct? <clears throat> yes. Did you see any officer slam Mr. Brooks to the ground? No. Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. No. Did you see any use of force directed towards Mr. Brooks by any police officer on the scene at that time? Objection hearsay. Overruled. No. Did you approach Mr. Brooks? Yes. Did you speak to him? Yes. What did you say? I asked him to identify himself. At that time, he said Brooks. I again asked him to identify himself. He identified himself as Daryl Brooks. And that's the name he gave you, identifying himself. Yes. Objection. And That's not what he says in the video. <coughs> um, overruled. Yes. All right. Did that name have any significance when you heard it, sir? <coughs> yes. Why? I knew prior to responding to that location that Officer Moss, who had initially located the car, had uh, made a cursory check of the vehicle during that time. He found documentation belonging to a Daryl Brooks. Okay. At some point, do you recall um, getting Mr. Brooks up off the ground? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, overruled. You may answer. Yes. Tell us what you remember at that point. Um, off our. Daryl Brooks was picked up off the ground or assisted off the ground. He was then escorted to the front of my Mark squad where I searched him. Did you take custody of Mr. Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes. Prior to placing him in your squad, was Mr. Brooks searched? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. Tell us what you remember about that, sir. So I searched Mr. Brooks, during which time I found some cards in his right pocket that had his name on it, as well as a black Ford key. Uh, do you see yourself in that photograph? Yes. Where are you? I am the officer with his back to the, the camera with police written across a fluorescent yellow and orange vest. Do you recall what you were doing at this point in time? Um, at that point, it looks like I'm buckling Daryl Brooks into the back of my squad, All or right. placing him into the back of my squad. And you see uh, a set of hands on the right side of the photograph, sir? Objection leading. <coughs> Overruled. Yes. You see the objects that are being held in those hands, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. Is that consistent with what you just testified as to the items you removed from Daryl Bo Brooks before placing him in your squad? Objection. Overruled. You said to me and called that name and Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes. It's a little blurry, but can you circle for us the uh, key that you indicated you found? And because it's a little hard to see, can you describe that key as you recall? Hmm. 
as I recall, the key was a single key. I don't recall there being any keychain to it. Uh, it was a fob type that had some buttons and it had a Ford emblem on it that indicated that was a Ford key. Did you eventually get these items back from the officer who was holding them? Yes. And what did you do with them? Uh, I took custody of them until they were ultimately turned over to Detectives Stern and Detectives Carpenter. All right. Do you remember Mr. Brooks asking you why he had been detained? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Yes. Please answer, sir. Yes. Do you remember specifically what he said? I recall that he had questioned why the police were handcuffing him or why the police were detaining him. Did you reply? Yes. What did you tell him? I told him that he was being detained as he matched a description of a subject involved in a crash in the downtown area. Do you recall Officer Moss airing that he had spoken with a potential eyewitness who indicated that they had observed numerous suspects run from the vehicle? Objection, hearsay. Grounds. Um, Overall, the witness may answer. I recall Officer Moss airing that to the officers responding in general that there may have been more than one suspect that had ran from the vehicle. You just stated that there may have been any reason why the air information said it had been, that he had had spoken to a potential eyewitness? Objection hearsay and Grounds. false speculation as to the words of another person. Grounds. Sustained. While setting up your uh, perimeter, <laughs> did you receive any more information about the suspects who fled from the vehicle? It was all kind of at the same time. Do you recall being advised that the male black had possibly fled southbound and that the male white had may have fled in a westbound direction? Your Honor, I Jack moved to strike. He's providing statements and facts that are not in evidence. They're based on hearsay. Um, the question was, did he recall being advised that? That was the question. Does he recall being advised? Still hearsay. Sustained. So who were you advised by? Officer Moss. And do you recall what you were advised? Objection. Hearsay. Sustained. Next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Hearsay. That here saying. And how did you end up being dispatched to the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? I heard another officer error that they were listening to Waukesha County Communications indicating that there was a person going door to door in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street. I'm sorry, you said you stated you heard that? Yes. Wouldn't that be like hearsay? Only if it's being offered for the truth of the matter asserted. If it's just explain what he did next, then no. That was the same question I asked before, Your Honor. And upon arriving at Elizabeth Street, you stated that there was already a suspect being detained at the at the moment that you arrived. No. So what did you observe when you got to the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? So when I initially got there, I didn't see anything. Did you observe? <clears throat> did you observe someone being detained at gunpoint? Not a, not upon initially getting there. No. Not not initially. Did did at any time you observe someone being detained at gunpoint? Yes, I already said that. Do you recall what they had on? Yes. You stay for the record and for the jury what they had on? They had red t-shirts and blue jeans. Blue jeans. They, were they jogging? Jogging pants or blue jeans? It appeared to be blue jeans. 
And do you recall why the suspect was being detained at that at that time? Yes. And what do you recall about why they were being detained at that time? You were being detained for involvement in a crash in the downtown area. When the suspect was detained, do you recall do you recall stating that you were confident they were either the driver or passenger of the vehicle found at three three eight Maple? No, I never said that. So I'm reading from your report right here that you just stated that you wrote. Do you recall saying I was confident that Brooks was either the driver or passenger of the striking vehicle? That is in my report. However, you asked if I said that. I didn't say that. That's a more or less an internal dialogue with myself saying that I felt confident that you were the suspect, either the driver or passenger in that vehicle. And you found a credit or debit card when uh, conducting a search? Yes. Do you, recall, do you recall where you found that credit or debit card? Your right pocket. And exhibit 176, where, where it shows um, someone holding the credit card. Was that you? Was what me? Holding the credit card. No. But you are the one that found it? Yes. And what else did you find? A Ford car key, vehicle key. And where did you find that? Your right pant po pants pocket. Can you play uh, Exhibit 80 for the witness? Do you remember this video? No, I don't. I didn't. That's not my body cam video. Pause. Well, go back like two seconds. Thank you once again. Is this right here the credit debit cards that you found? I can't tell what that is. Can you clear that? Madam Clerk, please and thank you. Can you go back maybe two more seconds? I think it's a clearer shot. Just for the record, Your Honor, it's not that easy to just jump back two seconds. I mean, if he has a specific time, we can jump I mean, to a time. How would I know if I, if I only seen the, visit, the video once? Like, why is it that big of a deal? Can you play from right there? Right there. 435, Your Honor. 435. Now it's on 437. We started it at 435. Right. It was started, and then you said pause, and obviously it takes time to do that, so... The record should reflect that Mr. Brooks has drawn a circle around something on the still image. Go ahead, ask your question. The record should reflect on um, consent to that name. Ask your question, sir. Who, whoever this is is holding is holding the, the credit card, debit card. Is that you? Objection. That is a fact, not in evidence, Your Honor. Sustained. <coughs> Re rephrase your question. Can you clear that? Madam Clerk, please. Thank you. You said that you found a key. Where is the footage of you finding a key? I don't have a body cam, so there's not going to be video of my body cam. So if you were wearing your body cam, it would have depicted what you found during your search? No, the city of Oxford did not have body cams during this incident.
So it'd be fair to say there is no footage of you finding a key. Right. Grounds. It's argumentative, and he's already said he was not wearing a body camera. Actually, he can't he said, know possibly. It's speculation. He can't know possibly. Actually, he said the city of Waukesha didn't have body cams. He didn't say. Right. It, it sustained. It assumes facts, not in evidence, and calls for speculation on the part of this witness. And there's also lack of foundation as to this witness. The foundation is this mysterious key he said he found. Um, the jury will disregard that statement made by Mr. Brooks. It's not his time to testify. You will have an opportunity to do that later if you choose. I don't consent to being caught that name for the record. Do you recall that about 1640 hours? I don't know. Would, would that be 440? Yes, that's 440. Do you recall directing traffic at the intersection of Barstow Street and Carina? Yes. And do you recall an officer hearing anything over the radio at that time? Yes, I do. Do you recall what that was? An officer had aired that you had driven around his barricade or into the parade route. <clears throat> you? What do you? Who do you refer to as you? You, Daryl Brooks. And you knew that at that time? Not at that time, no. So how would you say you? Throughout the investigation, it was determined to be you. And do you recall there? Uh, do you recall it being any other air information at that time? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Objection calls are hearsay. Grounds. Are you offering it for the truth of the matter, sir, or for some other reason? Otherwise, for, it's your side. For the truth of the matter, I'm asking him, does he recall what was aired on his radio? Well, then you're asking him to testify to hearsay, so it's sustained. Do you recall an officer indicating that the vehicle was continuing westbound and possibly blaring his horn? Objection. Grounds? Same objection, Your Honor. He's attempting to testify and offering hearsay statements into the record. I'm not attempting to testify. Um, sustained. <coughs> Grounds for the sustained? For the reasons the state indicated. Do you recall? You can ask the witness if he heard any horns at that time. That would be different. But what someone else may have reported would be hearsay if it's offered for the truth of the matter asserted. Well, I'm, I'm reading from the report that he wrote. That doesn't take away that it's hearsay. If it's in the report and someone else said it, it's actually double hearsay. Do you recall hearing about a vehicle blowing his horn? Objection. Well. Same objection, Your Honor. Um, overruled, he asked if this witness heard. That's how I heard the question. I think that's what you were asking. You yeah. mean at the... I'm a, did you hear about a horn? <coughs> what did oh. you hear, Your Honor? If the question was, did he, this witness hear a horn, then the witness may answer the question. <coughs> did he hear about a horn? That's different. That would be hearsay. So why don't you rephrase your question, sir? Did you hear a horn? No. Any reason why it would be in your report that a vehicle was blaring his horn? Same objection, Your Honor. Grounds. S assumes facts, not in evidence. Calls for hearsay. Sustained. Have you read the complaint in this matter? No. Have you seen the complaint in this matter? No. You yourself file a claim in this matter? No. You know of anyone who filed a claim in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Uh, overruled. He may answer if he knows. No. Do 
you recall whom subpoenaed you to testify here today? The state of Wisconsin via the Washoe County District Attorney's Office. And you say state of Wisconsin. Who who would you be referring to when you say state of Wisconsin? The entity that is the state of Wisconsin judicial system. So the state of Wisconsin is an entity to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Is an entity a living, breathing human? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant, argumentative, sustained. Next question. Do you know if the state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff in this matter? Yes. An entity is the plaintiff? Objection. Argumentative, Grounds. sustained. Have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Um, <coughs> sustained. It's also overly broad. You ever had a phone conversation? Objection. Irrelevant. <coughs> Have you ever seen the plaintiff in this case? Objection, Your Grounds. Honor. This entire line of questioning is completely irrelevant. Grounds. Let the state know the order of your witnesses um, so we can have them come at different times so that they're not all here for days waiting to be called. Respect. Um, <coughs> the prosecution didn't tell me the, the order of their witnesses. Why do I have to tell them the order of mine? Because they're assisting you in getting them to court. So I need you uh, to provide that order to the state uh, tomorrow when you come into court so that they can work with those witnesses. I'll probably say I'm not going to provide a specific order. I'm not going to do that. Well, then I, you need to tell I'll, which day, like morning and afternoon, and how many witnesses per. I'm not going to just bring them in um, all at the same time and make them wait. That's not... Um, that would be a discourtesy to those witnesses who you are calling. I get that, but I'm still I'm still confused. Um, I I just I essentially didn't know who they was calling in order. Um, that's not really relevant at this moment, sir. So I need you to provide the order. I'm not going to provide and, the order. Or by what start Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon. Uh, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, unless they're very short. I'm not going to provide an order. Well, if he wants our assistance, Your Honor, we will do that. Otherwise, he can be responsible for getting these witnesses here himself. You've got to cooperate with this process, or they're assisting you. Otherwise, you're going to be responsible for telling these witnesses when to come in. And so how am, how am I supposed to do that? Well, then you should cooperate with the state and their assistance to help you, sir. I'm, I'm not going to give a specific order. Sir, are you willing to provide the, the who the witnesses are by half day? I just said that. All right, I then that's what gonna, I need by tomorrow morning. I said morning. I'm not giving an order is that's what fine. I said. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction at some point? Not beyond what I've already addressed, sir. Which you addressed it, you didn't prove it, you didn't verify it. It's not verified proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction yet. It's not been proven on the record. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor, that you're not going to answer that? Your request is noted for the record. I've already addressed it. Is it noted for the record? It should be noted for the record. Also, that's the type of degree. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. We already been rising. Wondering when we go get the answer to that subject matter jurisdiction, though. Do you recall what time it was when you came on duty, sir? Objection relevancy. Over me. I believe it was a little after five. Uh, were you asked to assist detectives at Waukesha Memorial Hospital? Yes, ma'am. Did you go to that location? I did. And did you meet with anybody there? Yes, ma'am. Objection, Leedy. Uh, overruled. You may answer. 
Yes, ma'am. Who did you meet with? I met with Detective Jay Carpenter and acting detective at the time, uh, D Detective Stern. What did they ask you to do? I was tasked. Um, overall, give my answer. I was tasked with um, transporting Mr. Brooks to the Muskego Police Department. Okay. So at this point, Mr. Brooks is in custody. Yes, ma'am. I didn't consent to being called that day. Um, overall, you may answer, sir. Yes, ma'am. And the person you were uh, asked to drive to the Muskego Police Department, you see him in this courtroom here today. Yes, ma'am. Would you identify him, please? And uh, if Mr. Brooks would please remove his mask, Your Honor. Objection. I, I don't consent sir, to being called that day. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Oh, um, go ahead. It's the black male sitting at the table with a black suit and the mask that he just put back on. Where did you first meet? Oh, hold on. The record should reflect he did point to the defense table, and the record will reflect he identified him. Go ahead. Okay. Where did you first meet Mr. Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Uh, the Walshaw Memorial Hospital in the police hold room. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you um, repeat that? Mr. Brooks was talking over you. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Go ahead, sir. At the Walker Shaw Memorial Hospital in the police hold room. All right. And where were you going to take him? To the Muskego Police Department. Why? Objection leading. Overruled. Uh, Detective Carpenter said that he was going to be there um, so that he can question them sometime in the near future. To your knowledge, does the Muskego Police Department have a holding cell at their facility? Objections. Overruled. You may, you may answer. Yes, ma'am. And they were willing to uh, house Mr. Brooks there under mutual aid? Objection. I don't consent to being called that night. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes, ma'am. So you put him in your squad car? Yes, ma'am. All right. Tell us about that. Your drive. <coughs> Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. Uh, while going eastbound in Wisconsin, there was multiple uh, marked squad cars so they're with their emergency lights on. Do you know what they were doing? Uh, Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer, sir. They're blocking traffic, uh, investigating um, an incident that transpired. Is it just you and Mr. Brooks in the squad car? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, it was just me and Daryl Brooks in the, the squad car. Okay. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. And as you traveled uh, in the area of Wisconsin Avenue, did Mr. Brooks make any statements? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, overruled. You may answer, sir. <laughs> yes, Mr. Brooks said uh, when, once we were going to Spano, Wisconsin, um, and I quote, he said, uh, damn, it looks like they were dealing with something heavy. What else did he say? He asked me if there was a basketball game going on or something tonight, and to which I replied, I'm not sure. Okay. At some point, were you responsible for watching over him at the Muskego Police Department? Yes, ma'am. Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Your answer may stand. How long did you watch him for? Objection, rather busy. Overruled. I believe we got to the jail around closer to 1 a.m. Um, I watched him up until about 7 a.m. What kinds of things do you remember he did overnight? Objection, rather busy. Overruled, he may answer. He slept most of the night. Uh, he got up around 5 a.m., asked for water. I got him water. Um, and he asked to make a phone call to his daughter. Okay. Did you allow that? No. Did, uh, you said it appeared he was sleeping throughout most of the night? That's what I actually hear say. Um, overall. Uh, other than asking to call his daughter, did he make any other statements to you that you can recall? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. I remember he made some complaints that the room was too bright and he wanted me to dim the room. Um, yeah, that's all that I remember he Okay. Said. Like the lights in the room were too bright? Correct. In the cell. Holding cell. Did you turn off the lights for him? No objection, Lee. Overruled. His answer may stand. And uh, were you relieved by another officer then later that morning? Objection, rather than see. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Cross. Yep. That's a yes? Yeah. Go ahead. You said that you recall uh, checking every 30 minutes on uh, doing like uh, well-being checks. 
right? That's correct. And how do you know for sure that the suspect was asleep? I don't know for sure if you were sleeping. I know that the cover was over your head, um, and I would, every time I go and check in on you, um, I can see that your chest was rising up and down from underneath the blanket. So it's a possibility that you were sleeping. It's a possibility that you weren't. I know that you were on cover, so it appeared that you were asleep most of the night. So it would be fair to say you're not sure? It, it's answer. Stands, Your Honor, it's asked and answered. Objection. And do you recall why the suspect was not allowed a phone call? I was told that uh, you had to wait for a detective, Jay Carpenter, to talk to you. Would you would you say it's fair to say that usually a suspect being detained is allowed a phone call at some point? Relevance. Grounds. Relevance, sir. Grounds. No. <clears throat> why do you believe it's relevant? Um, why would why would the uh, contact to the outside world be restricted. All right, it's uh, I'll rule that it's not relevant. Sustain the objection. Next question. And do you recall where in the hospital this police hold room is located? In the hospital. Do you recall where in the hospital is located? Usually by the where the police officers park their vehicles through the ambulance bay, uh, straight ahead, and it's the second to last door on the right. And you stated that detectives informed you that they would need to speak with the detainee before any phone calls would be made. That's correct. To the best of your recollection, did they explain why to you? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Calls for speculation. Grounds. I'm sorry. Calls for hearsay. Grounds. And speculation. Are you offering it for the truth of the matter, yep. sir? Then it's hearsay and it's... <coughs> did you observe anything strange or while the... Recording was taking place? I don't know what you mean by strange. Like, did you notice any strange movements by the detainee? Anything that would alarm you in any way? Nothing that would alarm me, no. <coughs> did you receive information while you're at the Save Workshop Police Department regarding something that had happened at the parade? Objection leading. <clears throat> Overruled. You may answer, sir. I did. Um, I was confronted by Officer Daniel Malo. He was working as a desk officer for the department that day. Um, officer Malo explained that a vehicle had driven through the parade route down in downtown Waukesha, um, that there were approximately 30 to 40 people down, uh, many severely injured, some possibly deceased. Um, and that there was also an officer involved, shooting involved in the whole event. What did you do as a result of receiving that information? Um, the event kind of began to mold into two different forms at that point in that uh, there were numerous officers calling for ambulances in the downtown area for the injured, but dispatch was also beginning to provide information that there was an inner individual in the area of the 500 block of Elizabeth Street, which is quarter of a mile off the parade route um, that was loitering and it was believed that may be a suspect so I headed in that direction. Now prior to heading in that direction, did you have any information as to why this person in that area would be a suspect? Objection leading. Um, overruled. He may answer. Uh, yes, ma'am. A description had been provided of a possible suspect, and the descriptions being provided by the dispatch of the, the individual now in this area were um, comparable, nearly identical to the descriptions I was hearing of the driver from the parade incident. I proceeded over to Elizabeth Street, where the suspect who was identified in the investigation as Daryl Brooks was already in custody. 
with regard to the person involved's physical description. Um, do you recall what that was? Objection leading. Um, overall, <coughs> from the uh, information that I heard over police radio was uh, an African American male, blue jeans, and a red T-shirt. So, what did you do after receiving this information about um, a potential person in custody? Um, I responded to the immediate area. Um, Mr. Brooks, at that point, was already in custody for loitering as well as being a suspect at that point, um, as the operator of the vehicle that went through the parade route. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Overruled. Your answer stands. Go ahead. Next question. At the time that you made contact with this individual, did you have any information about the, the vehicle that had been used during the parade? Objection, leading. Overruled. <coughs> yes, a red SUV. Uh, that was actually a, a red Ford Escape, specifically. And did you have any information if that car had been located at the time that you went to the Elizabeth Street address? Yes, it had already been located. Did you have any information about that red SUV prior to going to Elizabeth Street? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The information I recall having is that the vehicle was uh, parked over on Maple Avenue, which is about two and a half to three blocks west of Elizabeth Street, where Mr. Brooks was located and taken into custody. Okay. Objection, I don't consent to being caught that night. Overruled. Did you have the opportunity to speak with an individual who was identified as Daryl Brooks Objection, at that Elizabeth Street address? Go ahead, you may answer. I don't believe I spoke with him at that address, but Mr. Brooks was transported to our substation located on Les Paul Parkway in the city of Waukesha, where I had opportunity to speak with him. Did you see him at the Elizabeth Street address? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you see him in the court today? I do. Uh, I'd ask the court to ask Mr. Brooks to remove his mask. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Can you identify him by where he's seated and what he's wearing? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Brooks is seated to my left, uh, wearing a dark-colored suit jacket, multicolored tie, surgical mask on his face, shaved head, um, and he did have a beard at the time he took his mask off. Let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. It will reflect. Thank you. So as you see Mr. Brooks today, does he look different than he did on November 21st of last year? Objection. What am I missing? Overruled. Yes, ma'am. How? Objection. Leading. Overruled. At the time of the um, at the time of the incident, Mr. Brooks had longer hair, uh, a braided style hair that probably went midway down his back. Did you obtain items that were located on the defendant's person? Yes, I did. What did they consist of? So the items I received that were on Mr. Brooks' person at the time of his arrest, there were several items. One of them was a Wisconsin photo identification card. So it had a picture on the ID card that I recognized as being Mr. Brooks based on the fact I was with him at this time. Um, the name on that identification <coughs> card was Daryl Edward Brooks Jr., his date of birth being February 21st, 1982. There was also a Wisconsin Green Wisconsin Quest card with Mr. Brooks' name on it, a silver American Express debit or credit card with Mr. Brooks' name on it, two Visa debit cards, one black, one white, both which had Mr. Brooks' name on it, and then there was a Georgia EBT card which had uh, the name of Mr. Brooks' girlfriend on it. Other than any the identifying information that you just testified to, is anything else turned over to you um, that was removed from Daryl Brooks. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name and it's leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, ma'am. There was $4 cash, but also a Ford ignition key. Now, you say that there was a suspect vehicle that had been located? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any information prior to your discussions with the defendant about who the owner of that vehicle was? Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I did. And who was the owner of that vehicle? A female by the name of Dawn Woods. And do you recall what her address was? Objection. <clears throat> Overruled. The witness may answer. 4014 North 19th Street in the city of Milwaukee. 
So 19th Street, you said? Yes, ma'am. Objection. Leading witness. Overruled. The answer may stand. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 172 um, that's going to appear on the screen in front of you. Uh, before we do that, um, these identifiers that you located for Daryl Brooks, did you um, take a picture of them? <coughs> yes, ma'am. I don't consent to being called that name for the hundredth time. Overruled. Um, if you can specifically zoom in on the Wisconsin ID card. Uh -huh. Um, the address on that Wisconsin identification card, is that the same address that you recited for John Woods? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, ma'am, it is. And the picture on the identification card, would that be consistent or inconsistent with what the defendant looked like on November 21st of last Objection year? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. It's almost exactly what he looks like. And who did he say his emergency contact was? Objection and relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. Mr. Brooks indicated his emergency contact person was Don Woods. And what relationship was Don Woods to him? Objection and relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. It is Mr. Brooks' mother. Okay. And did you subsequently obtain a phone number for Don Woods? I did. Objection and relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. What is that phone number, if you recall? Objection and relevancy. 414-610-2153. Now, when you asked the defendant for his name, what did he tell you his name was? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. I believe he indicated it was Darrell, D-A-R-R-E-L-L, -L, which, um, in speaking with him, and I can confirm seeing him today, um, Darrell Brooks or Daryl Brooks are one and the same. They are the same person. Do you recall approximately was this um, the car being driven while the parade, in the midst of the parade, after the parade, or before the parade, if you know? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. So the photo we're looking at right here is right in the middle of the parade. So right now, the vehicle is within the parade route while the parade is ongoing. And were you able to positively identify the driver of that vehicle? Yes, ma'am, I was. Hearsay. Overruled. Who is the driver of that vehicle? The driver of the vehicle is Daryl Brooks. Thank you. Now you had testified about some of the property that was recovered from the defendant, um, and you stated that one of the items was a card in the name of Erica Patterson. Do you recall that? Objection. He did not say who's in the name of. Sustained. Please um, rephrase. Actually, if we can pull up exhibit 172 again. Objection, hearsay. And, there's no question yet, but. And if you so can we'll zoom in on the Georgia EBT card. Whose name is on that card? Erica Patterson. Patterson. Overruled. Go ahead, you can answer that again. Erica Patterson. Did you, at the time that you were at the substation, have any information regarding an Erica Patterson and her relationship to Daryl Brooks? Objection that I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Objection is hearsay. Overruled. Ms. Patterson was a <laughs> significant other or girlfriend to Mr. Brooks and mother of one of his children. Objection, not girlfriend. Overruled. The jury will disregard that last <clears throat> statement as Mr. Brooks is not testifying at the moment. Well, keep it true. Now, when you made contact with Daryl Brooks, at, or while you're making contact with Daryl Brooks at the substation, did he complain of any injuries? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. I think the May prosecution answer. is trying to be funny at this point. Yes, ma'am, he did. He well, I didn't hear the last thing, but I believe it was commentary. So just state your objection, and I'll rule on it. It's been overruled. You may answer. Yes, ma'am, he did. He complained of two injuries, one to his knee, but primarily and mostly of an injury to what was his right shoulder. Did he say how that occurred? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, he did. Mr. Brooks told us that his shoulder was injured when he was arrested, indicating the arresting officers slammed him to the ground. 
Did you have the opportunity at any point in this investigation to review body camera footage um, from Officer Rebecca Carpenter? Yes, ma'am. And that was at the, the residence where the defendant was taken into custody? Yes, ma'am, it was. Did you see any um, unlawful use of force on the defendant during that time? Objection, you're saying? Overrule the witness may answer. No, ma'am. In fact, there was no force used at all. Mr. Brooks was given um, verbal directions by officers to get down onto the ground, and he did so entirely on his own power. Based upon his complaints, however, was the decision made to transport him um, for medical <coughs> clearance? Yes, ma'am. And where did you transport the defendant? Um, Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Entering the hospital, we, we escorted um, Mr. Brooks you know, to a room so that he could um, receive medical clearance. Uh, I know there were some individuals from the parade that were injured in nearby rooms. I didn't really see many of them, but I knew they were close by. Um, so we escorted Mr. Brooks into a room, trying to keep away from the victim so as to not uh, make the incident any more tension filled than it already was. How busy was it at the hospital when you brought Mr. Brooks in? Objection leading. Oh, overruled, the witness may answer. Um, extremely. There were, there were victims, due to the mass amount of casualties, many of which, you know, survived but still needed extensive medical attention. Um, it was very busy. Many of the victims were, were taken to alternate hospitals because Waukesha Memorial could not handle the, the amount of patients that were coming in. Now, <coughs> approximately how long did you spend with Mr. Brooks at Waukesha Memorial Hospital? Objection, I was consent to be in court. Probably about four hours. Is that addition to the time that you would have spent with him at the substation? Yes, ma'am. Overruled. What was his demeanor? Um, extremely calm. If I could, I would describe it, I guess, to put it in context for the court, very similar to mine right now, based on his body language, his tone of voice, his attitude. Um, you'd have never known he had done something or was in custody for having done something so serious. During the four hours that you were at the hospital, were you, um, did he continue to complain about shoulder pain? Yes, he did. Were his actions always consistent with his expression of the pain in the shoulder? Objection, speculative. Oh, <coughs> was the answer? No, they were not. Can you describe for the jury what you mean by that? Objection, speculative. <coughs> how, how can he know how somebody's body is feeling? Um, <coughs> Overruled, he may answer given as long as he answers with his understanding. Or, uh, what Observations is what Observation. Yes. Thank you. I think that's what you said. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So, Mr. Brooks, when he, he would speak to me throughout um, the evening, he would move his arms about, he'd put them out to his side, he'd move them back and forth, he'd raise them up and down. Um, he was talking about being in severe pain, but I would describe the way he'd move his arms and such as, as basic body mannerisms um, and basic interpersonal interactions. He, his hands, his arms, everything moved completely normally when we would speak. Um, there was no favoring of that shoulder or anything to indicate other than what he was saying through physical action that there was any type of injury there that I observed. During this time that you were with him and he was getting medically cleared, first of all, did he get medically cleared? Yes, he did. He didn't need to be... Oh, hold on. Overrule. Oh, His answer may stand. Do you need any treatment while at the hospital? No, he was checked out. The doctor came in and looked at his shoulder. I do not believe any medications were given. There may have been... I believe they took an x-ray to check it, but he was ultimately cleared and turned over to police custody. And during the time that you were with him while he was getting medically cleared, what type of conversation were you having? Was it a general conversation or were you talking to him about the, um, the loitering? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. I remember him telling me that 
baseball was his favorite sport um, and things of that nature. He was upset that the Packers had lost the game. So it was basically, it was general conversation not related to why he was specifically in custody. At some point, did you decide that you were going to try to talk to the defendant about um, at least the loitering incident? Yes, ma'am, I did. The witness may answer. Do you know approximately what time that took place? 11.04 p.m. And how did you approach this interview? You've now been with Mr. Brooks for um, maybe five hours, would that be fair? Yes. How did you decide to approach this interview with him? Objection leading. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. I just explained to Mr. Brooks that I simply wanted to speak with him about uh, why he was in the neighborhood where he was discovered that night, what was going on, um, what led to him being there, um, and that I was just looking to have answers to that if he was willing to provide them. For the court, it is the audio interview of the defendant that took place on November 21st, 2021. It's previously been addressed by this court. Objection. Um, remind me how long it is again. Um, Your Honor, the entire video is 25 minutes approximately. I'm asking to play from 4 minutes and 25 seconds to 14 minutes and 25 seconds approximately. Well, it would be 10 minutes. Um, I presume you'll have questions regarding that once you play it? Correct. All right. Uh, given that it's just before 5 o'clock, I'm going to stop for the day. We can pick up with this uh, tomorrow. With that, you are excused for the evening. We'll see you tomorrow morning. All rise for the jurors, please.